Good morning, good evening. My name is Jennifer Katiwa, County Director Jitangeme Children Program, Machakos, Kenya. I want to welcome you to today's Jitangeme Children Program fundraiser. Today marks the beginning of uh, our end of year call for well wishers to support the work that we do here in Kenya. And uh, uh, I will be having, uh, we'll be having a discussion and um, I have with me is uh, Peter Moasia, who is a uh, uh, beneficiary of Jitengeme Children Program and our Economic Empowerment Manager here in Jitengeme, and Farah Stockman, who is the founder of Jitengeme Children Program. We are going to have a throwback of an activity that we had over summer, that is in the first week of July, when we had our first ever family day, that is Jitengeme Family Day here in Machakos. And during this event, we were joined by our USA family for the first time in four years. During this uh, event, we graduated eight uh, parents who had gone through our street business uh, school program and 15 graduates from different universities and then graduated with different degrees, having specialized in different areas. And uh, during that period, we also took, uh, the Jitengeme family took an opportunity to, uh, that is to honor Farah Stockman, the founder of Jitengeme, for the lifelong work he, uh, he has done to the Jitengeme children and also to the community here in Machakos and Kenya at large. As regards to this, I would want to ask Farah, during, when she came, she came back for the first time, she came to Kenya for the first time in six years. I, we want to know, or you can tell us what was different, how was the feeling coming back to Jitengeme after six good years of not visiting? Um, there is, and Machakos had so many more buildings. And when we went to uh, the Jitengeme program, what really struck me was just the spirit of all of the people. Um, we have a professional staff now that um, the place looks so professional. Um, there was a wonderful um, menu of food, lunches that were way nicer than anything I ever <laughs> ate when I lived in Kenya. <laughs> um, and the the thing that struck me most was just the um, the really incredible um, spirit and professionalism of the staff. And um, particularly you, Jennifer, I have heard this was my Thank first you. time to meet you. And I had heard uh, what an incredible person you were since the day you were interviewed. People said, we have to hire her. That's the one. Um, but it was really to meet you and 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 uh, understand who you are and and how special you are to to the program itself. You have boundless energy, boundless ideas. You're very resourceful, and you have such respect in the community. So you know, Jennifer has been able to do things that we as Americans never could have done, and. Um, for instance, we the the best uh, public service announcement of Jitegeme was this march from the center of town to Jitegeme, which was done with all of the students, all of our parents who are graduating from the street business school, everybody in their shirts. And there was a truck that followed us be, that was first there was a marching band in the front. And then there was a truck with a with Alex Walimu, our, our, our founding teacher's voice, explaining what the program is. And so it's it's like this parade through town and with Alex explaining in Kikamba what is Jitagame. And you know, it was a brilliant way to explain who we are, what we're doing, and it was very, you know, it was very much of the of the culture. And I've in a million years never would have come up with that. So <laughs> it was really, really great to see um, where Jitegame has gone, and um, to feel like it's in good hands. Thank you so much, Farah. I'm humbled for the kind words. And uh, I can just say that uh, without your support, and uh, you, you are a pillar here in Jitengeme and uh, a founder, which uh, when you came with this idea, it has touched so many people and children in this community in Machakos. And that is why you saw all the joy in Machakos. We were so happy. And uh, the community, the government officials were so much happy because of the work that Jitengeme is doing. And currently, I must say, we are one of the best organizations in Pachacos that is doing real work in touching 
the livestock the community here in Matakos. I was happy also to meet you for the first time. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see <laughs> Farah and, uh, and the truth of the word. I was so amazed with the ideas that you have and uh, for supporting this program. And I will also say we will not have gone any further uh, without the support of the board members here in Kenya and in the US and all our donors who are here with us today. So we appreciate you. It is because of you that Kitengeme is doing the good work that we have. Mwasia has been our, one, of our, one of our role models here in Kitengeme and uh, we have always called him upon because he's, he's a pillar, a, a role model, and he went through the program here in Kitengeme joined as a young man, a young boy, and now he's a manager and a decision maker in the organization. We are so proud of you, Moasia. And uh, I want you to tell us how it felt like to have Farah come back. And uh, I've been going through the program, but at this time, the USA board and Farah, they came in. And when we held these uh, joint Kenya and USA board members, when we are discussing issues pertaining this organization that is Jitengeme, how we can move forward, the challenges that we are facing and how we can move forward. And we came up with a strategic plan for 2023, 2023 up to 2025. During this period, Mwasa, you would lead most of the sessions very well. How did it feel like to be in the same room with the team, with the USA board, with the Kenyan board who saw you when you were very small? You can tell us how it felt like uh, at that period when you had to lead, to lead, to lead sessions in a, in a joint board meeting. And you can briefly tell us about your journey here in Ichitengeme and how it felt like. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, yes, um, I think um, I, like, I, I lack the right adjectives to describe the feeling of that particular day. And uh, what I can, I'll try. Um, the last time I saw Farah, I think uh, Farah and um, some of the board members was when I was a student at the University of Nairobi. And uh, during this particular visit, I had uh, already graduated from the university with a bachelor's degree in economics. And um, being an employee of uh, of Jitegeme Children's Program, an organization that is very close to my heart because of the kind of impact that it has really created uh, in my life. And um, um, since um, I graduated, I've been working here. I think I started working here in 2017. And uh, I'm really happy to be making my contribution in, make, in amplifying the work that Jitegeme is doing in the Matakos community. Um, I have grown up in a community where so many young people um, and many families sleep on hungry stomachs. And I have been a part of that because uh, I think um, I come from a very vulnerable background. And again, because of the impact that the organization has had on me, today I think I'm totally a very different, uh, different person. And working for Jitegeme has really been um, good for me. I think um, I can be able to impact the lives of so many young people through the work that I do. And uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity uh, that is, is worth everything. And I think it's great. Thank you, Muasia. And I just want to uh, thank you for continued support to Jitengeme. And I want to remind everyone that, as I said in the beginning, today marks the beginning of our end of year call for well wishers to support the work that we are doing here in Matakos. And we'll keep on posting on the chat box the, the link on where you can pledge, where you can support the work that we are having today. We are looking at, uh, at, at this period, uh, realizing enough money to get us throughout through the year, so Karibuni. And um, I just want uh, to say that um, during the Tengeme has uh, gone uh, through enormous challenges and especially during this period of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. But uh, at such a time, we were able to survive that. We came out wiser, we came out stronger, 
And uh, according to your perspective, Para and Mwasa, what do you think made us to, despite these challenges, made Jitengeme to thrive? Well, I feel like I, I was just re remarking on this, how we are actually, it, the COVID pandemic made us do what we what we needed to do anyway, which is build a bridge uh, between Kenya and the United States, a digital bridge. We, we would never, you know, this kind of um, fundraiser we're having right now is kind of a direct result of us having to figure it out. And um, it's it's really it's really striking to me how, how there there are some ways in which we're better off now because we've had to figure out how to communicate um, uh, without uh, being in the same room, um, and I, it's 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 very cool to see. I agree with you. It taught us how to how to communicate, how to work without meeting as an organization outward. Online fundraisers meet in for in person fundraisers parties, and uh, it also taught us on how we can support our children um, through online learning. And uh, from the clip you have heard about uh, about that program where we were having M Shule, where we are having our students learning through using the phone. So it taught us uh, thinking outside the box. <laughs> And that's all the teams working as a team hustle through through online. We never knew even how to do online uh, online meetings, but we had now to learn at that particular point. And um, I think those are some of the uh, being willing to learn on the part of the board, being willing to learn on part of the team, and also on part of the donors. I think that has helped us so much to to overcome the challenges that were brought up by the pandemic. Was that? Can you add anything on that? You have something more, Farah? We can go to you, Farah. Oh, I, I just, I just wanted to thank the donors who were on this call, who were, um, who were flexible, and and there was a huge amount of flexibility. Um, I, I yeah. uh, on the part of uh, maybe Carolyn Workman Wacker, who who just, you know, there was just a, an enormous goodwill because of all, all this trust built up over years, where people realized we're in a new situation and we have to. We have to do something different. Wow, sure, thank you. The donors, I must say, they held our hands after I, and uh, sure, Farah, we need to thank them. We keep on thanking them for, for, for the support. Otherwise, without their support, we would, have not, we would not be here today, but we thank them for that you know, my support, especially during that time of need. That was really, really time of need where most of our families, I remember in this case, our, our parents or the guardians of the children can only get the, the, the casual jobs. And at that particular point, if it is washing clothes, it is like, uh, like cleaning their houses, the, the houses of other people. Nobody would allow them in their compounds. And given that now people were working at home, they were feeling that they don't need any person, any intruder, they may come with the disease. So with the support that we were given at that particular point, and the children are also so going to school, and these parents have no jobs. And at such a point, we use the funds also to give a special feeding program for the parents and children. And that helps us help our families to thrive during that particular period. So we are really, really, really grateful. Mwase, and you think there is something else that you have left that made us strong, that made us come out of the pandemic, uh, strong and wiser. I think um, the pandemic was full of lessons and uh, we were able as an organization to, to thrive and also survive during that hard time. And uh, one of the tools that we used um, and also one thing that we learned is adjusting to, to circumstances. The COVID-19, uh, for example, made us um, do some adjustments to our programming activities Jennifer, you've just given some few examples with what we were doing with the food distributions. Um, I also think that another thing that we did was in relation to the number of uh, students that we recruited for our vocational program and also our participants in the street business school. I think we, we recruited fewer numbers. Instead of, for example, for our street business school recruiting 45 parents, we went for 18 parents which again allowed for the social distancing, which I think was a creative way 
of ensuring that our parents continued learning during that uh, hard time. I'll also speak about our role in disseminating information to the members of our communities, just to make sure that there is awareness on why it is relevant for people to adhere to the government protocols uh, in the fight against the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the masks that we were giving our parents, uh, which I, I, I think again um, is something that um, actually uh, ensured that we survived and thrived during that uh, very difficult um, time. Thank you, Muasia, for all that. I just want to say, in the beginning of uh, this uh, call, we had uh, we had an introduction to our programs, and I'll just say I want just briefly to give you an overview of the programs that we have here in Itengeme. The first program that we have is the school support program, where we recruit children in primary school. We take them through secondary and then through the post-secondary program. And under this, we have 90 in primary currently, we have 49 in secondary today, and we have 33 in uh, for secondary and secondary education. Then our second program is the vocational program where we recruit children who uh, won't drop out of school or uh, their parents are not capable of taking them to secondary school and they join our, our vocational program. And currently we have 52 students, it's a two-year program where students, uh, we have a rehabilitation curriculum here in Hitengeme for one year. In another year, they select a trade, we attach them to mentors or trainers in Matakos town, where they are, they are trained. And at the end of the two-year period, they sit for NITA examinations, and then we graduate them. Then uh, our third program is uh, health. And under health, health hankers or our programs, that is, uh, the school support, the vocational training, and uh, the other program, which is economic empowerment program. And under uh, feeding, we provide, uh, that is where we do the feeding, which I will say we are giving during the COVID-19 pandemic. That is where we have annual health days. That is the same where we give guidance and counseling. And that is also where we do sexual reproductive health education. And uh, the, the fourth program is the Economic Empowerment Program. And uh, we are now, Muasia, who is our beneficiary, heads that program. And this is where we give uh, entrepreneurial skills to our caregivers and youth in Machakos. And uh, what we saw is that as an organization after some time, we found that uh, after we take one child in a family, uh, in a family of maybe a family size of 10, what happens to the other? nine kids with this mother or this parent. So we are training the parents with skills so that they can support themselves and also support the family. And um, I would want to know, Moasia, this is a program that has uh, grown over a very short period of time. And I would really want you to share what has contributed to this. Why has it expanded? And what is, uh, what, is, what is it doing to the impact that Kitengeme is having in our community here in Waitakos? Thank you so much. Um, I think our economic empowerment program is growing at, uh, at a very uh, high speed because of several reasons. Number one is what you just highlighted, Jennifer, the lessons learned during the home visits, during the, our recru recruitment processes, where we've seen that... Uh, um, our policy indicates or states that we need to recruit one child per family. But again, when we do the home visits, uh, some of the things that we learned is that a, par, um, a household has more than one child. And so we started asking ourselves the question around how do we contribute to making sure that the parent is empowered so that they can better support the other children in that particular uh, household. And so we started our street business school specifically to ensure that our parents have entrepreneurial skills that are important in ensuring that they open uh, small businesses, expand them over time, and be able to generate uh, a significant amount of income that will be able to change the lives uh, of, the, of, the, of the children in that particular uh, household. The other thing is in relation to the need assessment survey that we conducted in 2017 whereby we were looking at um, the status of the young people in Machakos. And the one of the, of the most striking findings 
um, is that we realized that there is so much in terms of underemployment and unemployment in Machakos. And so we, the, the assessment survey actually informed another programming um, activity that GTGME should start engaging in, and that is our youth hub, which uh, we, we call it the vocational and entrepreneurship program for the senior class. So we started recruiting um, from four levers um, in addition to the primary school graduates and also students who had dropped out of uh, primary school for the vocational program. We are teaching uh, young people uh, on entrepreneurial skills as well as vocational skills. And then um, we believe that the entrepreneurial skills as well as the vocational skills will align the parents as well as the youth to the economic opportunities that are available in Kenya. And the reason behind that is that we believe that it's going to have an improved level of uh, income that is at the household level. And therefore we are going to be in the front line fighting poverty and pulling so many families in our communities out of extreme poverty. And that is the kind of impact that GTGME's economic uh, empowerment program is actually having in our community. Well, thank you so much, Moasia. I know this is a program that you are very, very passionate on because of the youth that you're touching every day and you're meeting every day and all of us are behind you to support the program. I know mm -hmm. this is a program also the groups in the community and community members have come and uh, we hope and even to the community that grew organized groups where we are training them on entrepreneurship skills. And uh, this has uh, continued to impact positively to the community of uh, Machakos. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us today. I think it was great meeting you once more again and having a chat in this conversation and looking, having a throwback on what happened in July and also the work that you people are supporting here in Jitengeme. The team is so grateful for the support that you're giving us from that side and from this side. And we continue being uh, the strong, strong team. I know some of the members are here. I have seen Titus Moteti. I have also seen uh, Cecilia Muticia in our team. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for joining this evening and also for sacrificing time from that side. In, uh, I know it's a morning that side. So we really, really appreciate and continue reminding you to support the work that you're doing here in Nijitengeme so that you continue supporting the children, the vulnerable groups of children here in Machakos. They really need our support and they appreciate so much. And you have seen what, <laughs> you have seen that from Moasia. He's all smiles <laughs> here because uh, without your support, maybe you will not be here today will not be leading the community. He is also a leader in the community and we really, really appreciate. So thank you, have a good day. This thank you, Jennifer, day. thank you, have Peter. Thanks, thank Jennifer you. and Peter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>